All right, thank you, Corey. Sorry, no, don't throw anything. I know I work at Miami. It's not my fault. Um, I promise it's really good work. Um, so I want to, where do I click? Perfect. Um, so it's, it's quite unique that we all get to, to be here and, and receive this honor, which is incredibly humbling for all of us. But I, and we all get to, the chance to share our own stories. But um, I really wanted today to spend my, my few minutes talking about the power of one story and, and how that has changed my life and, and what we're able to do with our own individual stories. And really to encourage the, the students and undergrads that are here to start thinking about what they want their story to look like. So now, I believe the first year English course is called the Writing and Rhetoric 101 or something like that. But when I went through it, it was called First Year Composition. And most people actually test out of this. They get fives in their AP classes, and they don't have to take the, the course. But I took it, and I took one that was community-based. And so I grew up in a, in a Catholic family, went to church every Sunday. I learned all about, oh, you have to reach out to the poor and the marginalized and do all these things. But I didn't really know what that met, meant. And then I took this class. And it was taught by a man named Ed Kelly, who's awesome, and I think he's still here. But every week, we talked about a different topic in social justice. So one week, we talked about putting a face on homelessness. One week, we talked about putting a face on homosexuality. We talked about putting a face on gender equality issues. And all of these social justice topics really got me a little fired up that there was so much that was wrong with the world and really inspired me to, to learn more about what was happening in the world around me and try to learn a little bit more about the way that I could really make an impact in these areas. But in that course, I learned all about the different stories of individual people and I was taken out into the community where I heard firsthand the testimony of people that were going through very difficult situations and it changed me. Next slide. So, what looks for me may be a fairly normal path. So I went to a great college. I got right into medical school, went to medical school, got right into residency, went to residency. It sounds very, very basic, like uh, many, many Notre Dame students do. But each step of the way, I had slight little detours. So when I was here, I had the great opportunity to, to study abroad in Puebla, Mexico. And when I was there, I rotated through some hospitals. And I saw 14-year-old girls that were giving birth in the hallways of these hospitals. And I would go and I would talk to these girls and their families. And I would learn more about their individual story. That transformed me. Hearing this story and seeing it first person really changed me. I also, like Dr. Giwa, got to work at Camp Sweeney. And I worked with these awesome type 1 diabetics. I was, worked mostly with the teenagers there. And I learned about their issues of accessing insulin their life-saving medication that they weren't able to get enough of each month to be able to survive. Kids that would have to go into the hospital, into the intensive care unit, possibly die because they didn't have access to the medicines that they needed. Those stories transformed me. When I went to medical school, I then got to take a nice little detour to Kenya, where I spent two months working in a pediatric ward at Moy University teaching hospital. And there I got to hear the stories of the, of the physicians that worked there and the issues that they faced in, in not having the same level of resources that they thought the United States had, yet they were still delivering excellent care to the, to the children that they were serving. I also got to see kids that came in incredibly malnourished, kids that didn't have access to basic medicines and antibiotics, and that made it really, really difficult for, for me to not be able to help them. Kids with cancer that couldn't get their treatments. Learning their stories really transformed me. And then during my pediatric residency, I developed a relationship with an institu institution in Brazil where I got to go out into the, the poor communities in Brazil near the favelas, which are pretty dangerous places. And I got to speak to individual families and learn about how they manage children with chronic medical conditions in a low resource setting. And that showed me that we can do a lot of work with very little resources. And those stories have all transformed me. I consider that part of my life to be the prologue to, to where I am now, and I feel like my story is just beginning. So what do I get to do now? So now I work at the University of Miami. I get to be a general pediatrician, but I get to work with all sorts of really interesting patients. So I have two sides to my job. My main job is actually working in a school health program in North Miami, where I work in nine schools, and I serve as a primary care provider for children that don't have insurance in, in those communities. It's a large Haitian community, many of whom were displaced after the Haitian earth earthquake a few years ago, but we deliver primary care and preventative care services. We also do a lot of telehealth work where we're getting them in, into subspecialists in the school clinics, so these kids don't even have to miss school 
to, to be able to receive healthcare. The other side of what I do is actually on the pediatric mobile clinic, as Corey mentioned. And this, we actually go out into the most remote areas of Miami-Dade County, and we provide primary care and preventative care services to only uninsured patients. So we work with a lot of patients coming from Central America, South America, and the Caribbean islands that don't have medical insurance and have been forced to flee their country for safety reasons, for political unrest, and for fear that their family might be in very serious danger if they didn't do so, trying to find a better life. So it's through these stories of all of my patients that I really feel quite overwhelmed and quite humbled to, to be able to, um, to stand before you today and share a little bit of their stories with all of you here at Notre Dame. And so that's um, why I feel so incredibly lucky today. So the only question that I really want to leave with uh, the students and undergrads that might be here today is, what do you want your story to look like? My story really started to form when I was a freshman here at Notre Dame in my first year of composition class. And so I want you to start thinking about what is the impact that you want to leave in the world and what is truly the person that you are that you want to become in the future and how do you want to go out there and make a difference in the world. So that's my story or the beginning of it. So thank you for having me.